Fifteen years ago, scientists measuring well-being across different generations reported a U-shaped curve. Younger age groups had the highest levels of well-being, followed by a dip in middle age, rising again in older age. Today, the U-shape has collapsed. A similar measure capturing mood and outlook today looks like this. Each younger age group doing worse. What is changing, though, goes far beyond the mood and outlook aspects of well-being to encompass the entirety of our mental health and well-being, which we define as the ability to navigate life's challenges and function productively. Quite simply, our overall capability of mind. It includes our ability to relate to others, which we call the social self, our adaptability and resilience, our drive and motivation, cognition, and the relationship between our mental and physical health, or the mind-body connection. All aspects that we measure through a comprehensive assessment of 47 elements across 70 countries. Our global data shows that each younger generation is now worse than the previous generation, Almost half of 18- to 24-year-olds are now struggling at a level that substantially impairs their ability to function productively, almost five times as many as their grandparents' generation. Consider the economic and social implications. What happens to society when the majority is unable to relate to one another, navigate life's challenges, and function productively? And this is true not just in the United States but across the entire Internet-enabled world from Europe to Africa, the Middle East, Asia, and Latin America. And surprisingly, wealthier countries tend to fare worse, with African and Latin American countries generally faring better than countries such as the United States, Australia, and the UK. This despite rising investment in mental health care over this period in these countries. In fact, the number of psychiatrists per capita has no correlation to the mental health and well-being of a country. This all begs the question, what has changed in our environment to cause this decline? Why are younger generations struggling so much? And why aren't current systems good enough to solve it? With a wide breadth of data from almost 2 million people across the globe, the Global Mind Project is beginning to unravel this puzzle. Here's what we've found. 1. Smartphones Smartphones became ubiquitous around the time this decline first appeared, with those in developed countries being the earliest smartphone adopters and, today, using their phones on average for four and a half hours a day. Our data shows that the younger someone gets a smartphone in childhood, the more likely they are to struggle with their mental health as an adult. Females particularly, are almost twice as likely to have mental health struggles if they got their phone at age 6 versus age 18, with the primary impact on their social self and ability to relate to others. In particular, owning a smartphone from a younger age is associated with a higher risk of suicidal thoughts, greater feelings of being detached from reality, and more aggression towards others. 2. Ultra-processed food consumption Ultra-processed foods, in other words, foods low in nutritional quality and containing a growing number of industrialized chemicals, have been growing as a share of the calories consumed across the world, from infant formula to snacks to fast food. Young people today are the largest consumers of these highly processed foods. Our data shows that the daily consumption of ultra-processed food means three times worse mental well-being with impact on all dimensions, but particularly adaptability and resilience and mood and outlook. The most prominent symptoms are those associated with depression, such as feelings of sadness and hopelessness and low energy levels, along with challenges to emotional and cognitive control, such as controlling anger, keeping focus, and recovering from setbacks. 3. Sedentary Lives with motorized transport and technology, there are now fewer reasons to walk or move at work and in school, and modern lives have become increasingly sedentary. Our data shows that those who rarely or never exercise are two and a half times more likely to have mental health struggles compared to those who exercise regularly, 
with a particularly dramatic impact on mood and outlook and mind-body connection. Specifically, lack of exercise makes people more sad and anxious and results in less energy, worse sleep, and more physical aches and pains. 4. Disintegrating Social Structures With modern paradigms of individualism, a focus on productivity, and 24-7 technology, the bonds among family and community are fraying. Younger generations are now twice as likely to report not getting along with their families, having fewer friends who will help them out, and feeling less love and care for others in their community. Those with very poor family relationships are almost four times more likely to be distressed or struggling, particularly with their mood and outlook and social self. Specifically, those with poor family relationships are more likely to avoid and withdraw from social situations, feel sad or hopeless, have unwanted stranger obsessive thoughts, and have difficulties forming relationships with others. 5. Plastics and Plasticizers With annual plastic production now four times what it was 30 years ago, plastics are now ubiquitous in the human body, from the blood to the brain, with younger generations having higher exposure during their childhood. Plasticizers that leach from our food packaging into our food and drink also have neurodegenerative properties. Our data shows that those consuming food in plastic or plastic-coated containers daily are almost twice as likely to have mental struggles distributed across every dimension, with some of the more prominent impacts to aspects such as sleep quality and emotional resilience. These factors have overlapping effects, but together account for at least 80% of the mental health challenges that people experience and explain most of the generational decline. Altogether, over time, people's lives have shifted from being more physically active and socially engaged to one of inactivity and disconnection, making us sadder and less emotionally, relationally, cognitively, and physically healthy. And all this while we consume increasing quantities of chemicals through our food and drink that degrades the functioning of our brain diminishes our adaptability and resilience, our ability for emotional and cognitive control and regulation. Understanding the nature of the problem is the first step, but where do we go from here? Donate now to expand our understanding of the causal factors of our mental health decline and what can move the needle to reverse this trend.